Hello and welcome to this very special video today. As many of you know, I travel all over the world consulting for new and existing boba shop owners to help them set up or improve their businesses. And over the last year, I have quite honestly worked with some of the biggest brands in the industry over three continents. It's been pretty crazy. So I thought I'd share with you today a lot of the common problems that I've experienced over the last year that boba shop owners have and a lot of times don't even realize it. These things I wouldn't normally notice one-on-one -on -one mentoring over Zoom, but only on location in the shop. Okay, so the first on my notes is flow. Flow is super important in the drink making process, right? So you wanna think about it as step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. What happens first? What is the very first thing that's gonna happen when you make that drink? You're probably gonna grab a shaker. <laughs> you know, what are you gonna put into the shaker? Is it gonna be, you know, a product like a syrup or a powder, or are you gonna put tea or water in it first? So we wanna think about the overall flow from beginning to end. And that actually leads me on to my next point, which is the ice. So there's two parts to this. So ice is obviously super important when you're making a bubble tea drink. And a lot of it has to do with where it ends up in the flow of the overall drink making process and the equipment. If you're gonna have it out front where people can see it during the drink making process, it should be at that point in the process, right? Obviously, if it's gonna be behind the scenes and you're gonna be using a refrigerated drop-in barrel type thing where you put the ice in it, again, that should be during the flow process. So when you're putting together your plumbing, that's something to think about. Where is the ice machine gonna go? water in and drain out. Flow is super, super important and there's just so many components to consider. So rather than doing it after you've laid out your entire shop, consider actually putting this together before you start construction. Things that are super important for this, like I mentioned, are the piping, right? So for the ice machine, um, if you are gonna have a water feed for your hot water, is it gonna be manual or is it gonna be coming in from the pipes? Electrical sockets, what needs electricity? Well, obviously your hot water boiler will need electric, uh, your ice machine will need electric, your shaker machine, your sealer machine, like all of these things are super important to know for electrics, which leads me on to my next point is electricity. Time and time again, it's happened so many times that there's just not enough electricity feed. So things are constantly popping, going off, the circuit breaker is restarting. And I often speak with a lot of new boba shop owners who thought they had enough electricity and they've realized they need more. So make sure you have more electricity than you actually think you're going to need. And then that way you don't have to worry about trying to install it later after the fact once you're opened. This not only has to do with actual electrical outlets in the walls, but the amount of electricity that you have feeding into your shop location. And speaking of pre-planning before construction, we wanna think about storage. There's usually never enough storage. Now this is twofold, right? So one storage location is on site. So physically in your shop, maybe um, hidden storage front of house or storage back of house that customers don't see, but also consider having an external storage location. So if you're a small business, this could possibly be your garage or your shed, um, assuming that you're not keeping any food products in there, but things like cups and seals and straws and things that you wouldn't normally consider, they are very, very bulky and you need a lot of space to store them. Whereas obviously when you do get a big shipment of supplies in, um, it's, it's on a pallet, there's a lot. So you have to think, where are you gonna put all of this stuff? And you know, the supply levels will fluctuate, of course. So we need to consider when you're at full capacity for your supplies, uh, where are you going to store them? So in terms of storage and electrical power, you can never have enough. And then let's talk real quick about staff being creative, okay? Yes, we all love creativity in our staff. It's amazing, it's fun, it's quirky, but the creativity needs to end there. I mean, when you put a recipe up on your wall or in your book and you want staff to memorize that, it needs to be the same every single time it gets made by every single staff member. So one time I went into a shop, I ordered the exact same drink three times, over the course of a few days and it was made by a different staff member every single time and it was completely different. So one staff member made it too watery, the other one the flavor was too strong, the other one, I don't know, the boba was cooked incorrectly. Consistency is key and this is super, super important. So if your staff are trying to be creative with their with your recipes and things like that, there's a time and a place and maybe an occasion, but just having them be creative with the recipe that already exists 
and doing their own thing and creating their own measurements and, oh, well, do it this way today and that way tomorrow. It's just, you can't have that. Everything needs to be the same every single time, no matter who is making it. And if you don't already have recipes for your shop yet, or you're starting or you're thinking of starting, you know, keep it as simple as possible. I have recipes on my website for sale, all different types of recipes for different genres and styles of drinks. So feel free to check that out on my website. I hope this video helped. If you guys have any more questions or you need assistance, my contact details are on my website and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.